I was filling out the application for the Wendy's High School Heisman Award. Um, I didn't really know that much would come. It, it's teamwork. It, you communicate with... What that involves your, is uh, making sure I communicate and coordinate with uh, each of the guidance departments. We're um, building a ramp for someone who um, really Don't can't. give up just because it's hard, because I had a lot of times where I thought I wasn't going to make it. Hi, welcome to Hometown Heroes. I'm your host, Andy Kitzrow. Joining me in the studio today is Allison Saylor. Last time you got to see her was when she was in fourth grade. So it's been a few years, but we're excited to have her back. Welcome to the show, Allison. Glad to be here. So tell me, um, what have you been up to almost this past decade? Um, and I know you were at Bennett, and I think you just recently graduated. I sure tell me did. What's going on? Uh, I just graduated, and I'm about to go to college for musical theater at the University of the Arts in Philadelphia. That's great. Well, when we had you on the show um, in fourth grade, you were um, actually in Girl Scouts, and we were talking about that. And now you are working, you're a Silver Scout, and you're working on your goal. Tell me about this whole experience. Uh, well, with my Silver Award, I completed, I created a drama club at Bennett Middle. Um, and we, I produced its first two productions, and we raised money for the food bank. Um, and we created about, I think it was 1,585 meals for those who are in poverty. Um, and right now I'm working on my gold award, which is about changing the stigma on mental health. And uh, right now it's kind of negative, especially with shows like 13 Reasons Why and other things where people with mental health are negatively portrayed. And I'm working on making that more positive and creating a more uh, positive environment and dialogue around that. That's great. That's really exciting. Um... So let's talk about this drama club that you started in middle school. I know mm -hmm. drama is a big piece of your Absolutely. life in theater and stuff like that. Um, tell me about that whole experience when you did that in middle school and how that's um, stayed with you. Absolutely. That was kind of an awakening for me, uh, theater-wise, and for my entire life. Um, because I've loved performing ever since I was very small, and I've known since I was in third grade that I wanted to be on Broadway. Um, but the drama club at Bennett Middle was my first experience with directing, um, and since then I've directed five shows, um, a couple or one musical, four main stage plays. Um, and once I complete my degree in musical theater, I plan on getting a master's in directing. So tell me, um, you in high school, I mean, once you got into theater, you did a couple different performances and shows, I believe rock and roll revival. Tell Absolutely. me about what you've been doing in that whole arena. Absolutely. I've done Rock and Roll Revival all four years, and I also perform with the Jameson Bennett Drama Club mm -hmm. and the Ocean Pines Community Players uh, for Children. And I've done about five shows a year, give or take, every year, depending. Um, and I've done, in this past year, I did a Shakespeare play. I did As You Like It, and I did Almost Maine with... Mm -hmm. um, with the James and Bennett Club, and then I did Into the Woods Junior, which I also assistant music directed with the Ocean Pines Children's Theater. That's great. So you've got all of these theater productions that you've either been in mm -hmm. or helped direct, produce. Um, you know, that's a, that's a lot. You mean, I think you just said yeah. five in this past year. What has that uh, kind of taught you about yourself, whether you're in front of the camera or, um, or not camera, but on stage or, in, or behind the scenes? And you know, when you started in middle school until now, sure. you're graduating, going on to college and pursuing it. What have you kind of learned about yourself? What's this evolution process? Been? In theater, you learn a lot about how to connect with other people, but also with yourself. And you learn how to empathize with situations that you may not understand as well. Um, like for teenagers who have never been through any uh, major trauma, they may be playing people who are going through a particularly rough relationship. And that may help them understand some people who are. Um, but it also teaches you how to get in touch with yourself. Um, so we do this thing in drama called Actors Inventory where you say, I am, I want, I need, I feel. And it tells you kind of where you are in the, your situations and lets you assess uh, yourself and other people before you perform so that you can get in the right headspace. Um, yeah. That's great. Um, well, let's talk a little bit more about the actual... You know, you, you get into character, you do that type of stuff, but you've got people who are even, you know, who may not even want to do drama because they're scared about talking in front of people, sure. let alone acting and trying to get... How does um, how did you ever come, maybe the fear, and, and you said as a young person it wasn't something that, um, you know, you were scared of doing, but, you know, it's always kind of like those butterflies before a show. Or Absolutely. Before, how do you, uh, you know, how do you gain that confidence to 
to take on a role or just to be in front of people? You get a lot of support from your fellow actors and from your crew. Um, and at the end of the day, it's really just about what you can put out there and what the audience gives back to you. And you want to give something good that will make people think and hopefully make people feel better than they did when they came in. Um, so that kind of confidence is something that takes time because at first you're so worried about what will happen if you mess up a line or what if people don't laugh at my joke. Um, but over time you realize that you can't really control that and all you control is your performance. Has uh, drama um, in the stage helped you in other areas of your life and sure. academics and tell me about that absolutely i um especially with like english and history and other like liberal arts courses that i've taken already um it really helps me understand um more like like to use a theater term motivation behind what people might do in a book or in events that have happened in our history um and it kind of also helps me be more focused. Theater requires you to be really focused and really centered and to pay attention to what you're doing. Um, and in any class, that's super helpful and it teaches you to be disciplined. Um, yeah, I think the dis it's, it's really good to be able to have that, um, just the whole concept of, of drama or theater and you know, for anything from the, as simple as memorizing lines to just being able to develop that relationship with other people on stage and getting that confidence and discipline, those are all great um, components to, to being a better student, mm -hmm. um, being a better person. Um, but let's uh, shift off of drama for a second and talk about uh, the scouting side of it. Um, and you're working on your gold scouting. It sounds like even with all this drama stuff and the super busyness, you still have stuck with scouting. And Absolutely. What, tell me about um, the, your whole scouting experience and, and what you plan to do with that. Well, I've been a Girl Scout for 13 years, um, and technically this is my last year, but mm. you're, once you're a Girl Scout, you're always a Girl Scout. Right. Um, and that's something that's been incredibly formative to me. Um, there are about four girls in my troop right now, including myself, and we are so close. We're like a little family. Mm. Um, and it's they've all helped me realize who I am as a person and as a woman in our community. Um, but we've also gotten to grow together, and we've actually gotten to do some drama things together. We, uh, we're not exactly a STEM-based troupe like many are, but we like to go to New York, and we do workshops. We actually did one with a cast member from Hamilton, and we've done stuff Great. with people from Wicked uh, and Phantom of the Opera. And um, it helps some of us get out of our shell a little more than others, um, and we get to inspire each other, and that's really important. So this next one is kind of a two-part question, you know, um, talking to the younger version of yourself. Um, what would you say to a person who's potentially um, considering getting into scouting? And then what would you say to a person who's thinking about getting into drama or theater? Well, I can say for both of those, it's like the best experience of your life and you learn so much about yourself. Um, and as you get older, especially with Girl Scouts, there were so many people who dropped out because it wasn't cool and like it's a little girl's thing. Um, and I even, when I was in sixth grade, I wanted to drop out to pursue theater more. Um, but it's not, it's not just something that's time consuming, it's something that you are learning from and just don't drop out when there's more that you can learn. Um, but definitely like pursue both of those because you get the option to learn more about yourself and to help your community. And what's neat with you is you were able to actually blend the two by Absolutely. going after your life scout with in incorporating drama. So you didn't have to have an either or, you were able to bring them together. That's a really neat um, option, opportunity to be able to per perpetuate the scouting while being able to pursue another one of your sure. dreams. Um, so how did you end up landing on, on the university that you wanted to, the University of the Arts, I believe? Yeah. Um, it's in the perfect location for me because it's about an hour from New York by train. Um, and it's also right in the theater district of Philadelphia. I can actually see um, City Hall from my dorm because we're that close to everything. Um, but it's also a super welcoming group of people. I talk to people outside of my discipline, and then I've got a group that's just musical theater majors, uh, and they are the nicest, kindest, most welcoming and inclusive people you'll ever meet. Um, or I guess I haven't met them yet, but <laughs> I will. Um, 
And that just kind of solidified it for me. These people are kind of like home already and I haven't even talked to any of them in person yet. That's good. That's good to be able to have kind of a family when you're going into school. Um, it helps with some of those, uh, you know, those nerves of a new situation. Uh, but speaking of a new situation, what else have you taken from your high school experience within drama, theater, and even scouting that is going to assist or help you with the transition into to college and kind of sure. being on your own? Uh, over summer, I do these programs that are like musical theater intensives. Last year, I did one at Ryder University. Um, and I have a lot of friends who, when they go to college, they don't really talk to people at first, and they're kind of miserable their first semester. Um, but when I go to these summer programs, I completely set aside any negative uh, thoughts I might have and any worries I might have, and I just let myself be fully out there um, and make new friends. And I think that's going to help me a lot when I go to college because I'm not going to be sheltered and nervous the way that some of my friends have been. Um, but I can use what I've learned in theater and scouting to talk to people that I might not know as well um, and be more open to other people whose situations don't exactly replicate my own. And I guess just the nature of, of theater in general is you've, you've got to be out there. You've yeah. got to take a risk. Um, and then when you're exploring characters, you're, you're putting yourself in positions that aren't actually you so you can learn about different people or different ways that people have been raised. And, and you mentioned that you've done some really interesting workshops this past mm -hmm. year where you've had to explore different characters. And tell me a little bit about that, sure. those experiences. Sure. Um, in this past year, I've gotten to play a few characters. Um, I started my, I guess, season this year by playing Phoebe in As You Like It. Um, and she's not the most open-hearted, welcoming person of all time. Um, so I had to learn how to portray somebody who's not necessarily the nicest, um, but still make her sympathetic or else she would just be a caricature and I wouldn't believe what I was saying. Um, and then Into the Woods, I played the witch. Um, and I've played a lot of mothers, which, uh, is actually, I've decided is my favorite kind of roles because I get to be nurturing. I get to have a special bond with somebody um, that other people who play the characters in shows might not get to have. Um, and it's, it's come to be a favorite of mine. But the witch is a bit more flawed than that because the child that she has is not actually her own. Um, so I've learned a lot from her and how to make her um, and make myself understand people when I may not necessarily agree with them. Um, and then my most recent role was Rhonda in Almost Maine. Um, and she's incredibly sheltered and guarded and she's not willing to be open even with her best friend um, to the point that they've been friends for I think three years and he hadn't even been inside her house um, and in that 10 minute scene that I did I had to go from being entirely guarded to being completely open and uh, willing to do whatever came next I guess um, so there's a lot of introspection that has to go on with stuff like that. Um, and I learned a lot from each of those roles this year. So it's interesting. I mean, as an audience member who would be watching you on screen, you, know, you want to build that empathy. You want mm -hmm. people to be able to empathize. But I guess also as the, the person playing that character, you're able to develop empathy for people that you would come across in school or just in life who may be really facing those situations, yeah. um, which is good. It, it helps develop... Um, so what role, kind of in a broader sense, does uh, drama theater play in, in this, the development of adolescent or teenagers, and, and, and how valuable is those type of experiences for people? Sure. Well, the arts are kind of everywhere, even if you don't necessarily um, pursue theater in your everyday life. Like our club only has 30 or 40 people in it in a school population of 1,500. Um, you may not necessarily pursue drama in the traditional sense, but you still play a role every time you talk to a new person. Um, there's a really good book called Every You, Every Me by David Levithan, and it's all about, they refer to the different masks people wear, which is a common theater thing about how um, the way that I see myself is not the way that you'd see me or the way that my best friend or my mom or my sister would see me. Um, and you never really have a full understanding of who you are because everybody's perspective is different. And you kind of have a different mask just like you would in theater. Um, so that all comes 
full circle. That's good. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. That's, I kind of want to reflect on that. Um, <laughs> one of the pieces I kind of wanted to uh, shift over a little bit is um, when you are on stage and you are doing a performance and knowing that there's an audience that's watching mm -hmm. and, and you feel comfortable knowing that you've, de you've delivered a good performance, um, but then, you know, whether after the show or, you know, through an email or something, or people who are in the audience really empathize with or really appreciate your role, how does mm -hmm. it make you feel to know that you've kind of done a good job? It makes me feel so good, um, but not just to know that I've done a good job as a performer, but to know that I've touched lives outside of my own because I can always go to bed knowing that I put my best foot forward as a performer, but if it hasn't reached anybody, um, then I haven't really done my job. Uh, and one of the most touching things when we finished Almost Maine was that a couple of my friends were out tweeting after our first night that people had to come see the show and we had people coming back, which isn't a popular occurrence with the drama club. Um, but there are so many layers to something like that and it's such an uplifting story that it made people want to understand connections better and to kind of fall in love with the show again the way we had, which is what we were hoping for. So to get those positive reviews on a high school show like that was thrilling. That's great. Now, now taking that one step further, what if you actually found out that people who saw your performance, you specifically as the performance, like, I want to get into drama, I want to get into theater. Tell me about uh, how that makes you feel, knowing that you've kind of created new theater um, people. That's actually um, happened to me before with my mm -hmm. best friend. Um, he came to see our fall production in my 10th grade year, Diary of a Wallflower. And the spring show, he decided he wanted to audition, and he was so nervous. Um, and he showed up to auditions. He sent me videos of him doing his monologue in advance because I used to critique people's monologues for them before they'd go into their auditions. Uh, and he sent me a video of his monologue, and I was mind blown. He was so good. Um, and he came to the audition, and we started with a warm up, and we do this like cult chant thing because it helps get your um, your voice ready and it makes it so that you don't really mess up what you're saying. Um, and he was absolutely freaked out. He was shaking. Um, and he was like, Allison, I don't think I can do this. I think I need to leave. Um, but he stayed and he auditioned and he actually got the lead role in the show. Um, and now he's going to college in New York City as well uh, to pursue theater. So I would say anybody who has any interest in drama could come out and audition or they could be in tech. Uh, just come and learn and be part of the crazy magical group that is theater people because uh, you can never meet a more open group of people than us. Um, and you might find your life calling from it. That was a good pitch right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, thinking about it from kind of like the leadership role or, or the director thing, um, you've helped as a producer slash director on some local shows, that's where you want to potentially go into when you're masters. Mm -hmm. um, what makes you, what inspires you to want to be kind of like the leader on the set, the director? Um, and tell me a little bit about anything that helped you get to that point, wanting to kind of be a leader sure. among, among the group of the cast members. Well, I happened upon directing kind of by chance with this mm -hmm. project. Um, but as I grew as a performer, I realized that I didn't just want to act. I liked seeing the bigger picture and finding um, parts of everybody's narrative that fit back into it. Um, and I liked conceptualizing things. Like when we did As You Like It, we didn't wear Elizabethan clothing. We didn't, uh, we didn't make a big Elizabethan set. Um, we did it set in New York City subway, and everybody was a modern kind of person like our our, um, shoot, what's his name? Our Silvius. He was a kind of tech nerd. Um, and my character was a social media influencer because we wanted to kind of recreate the story now. Um, but I'm really interested in finding those, those bigger picture things that you don't just get as an actor when you're, you're being told what to do and you really only see yourself and the people you're working with. I like seeing all of it and creating a bigger story. That's great. That's really cool. Um, I don't know if there's going to be a, a, a big stretch or not, but it's, it's rolling around in my head, and I, I think it's related. Um, going back to the ability to do scouting and theater at the same time mm -hmm. and, and your gold award, 
um, kind of the destigmatization slash campaign about the mental health stigma that exists and, mm -hmm. and trying to just bring awareness to that whole piece. Um, are there parallels from the theater, um, whether it's certain characters you get into who may be struggling with some of that stuff or just what you learn through the theater experience, like we've talked about confidence and self-esteem. Um, did, did any of that have an influence on why you chose to pursue that as your goal? Or Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, there's actually a lot of really good theater that centers on uh, mental health. The Tony winner from last year, Dear Evan Hansen, is a huge landmark for that kind of theater. Um, and my favorite show, Next to Normal, which is about a woman who suffers from bipolar one disorder and she sees her son who's been dead for 16 years and she lives her entire life like that. Um, and my initial plan with the Gold Award was to create this mental health cabaret um, where people could get up and they could talk about their experience with mental health. They could sing a song or do a poem or give a speech or do a scene or whatever felt natural and right to them to share about um, mental health. And that plan has kind of changed a little and now we'll be doing it through a series of videos that'll be posted online um, that I'll actually be working with my drama club on, hopefully. Um, that we And my plan is that we'll collect statements from people who may not want to speak out themselves, um, but we would have my drama club come in and they would get to give these statements and maybe we'd have um, some vignettes to portray what we're talking about. I think it's a really great idea, um, and we'll follow up on it, but I know that there's a big push um, from the city of Salisbury um, in the health, mental health um, destigmatization campaign mm -hmm. through a, a program called um, WIDAC, one of their, their committees. Um, so we will follow up sure. off camera on that piece. Um, I think the only other couple questions I had were, um, you know, since we last saw you a long time ago to now, um, is there anything else that's kind of been going on with you that you want to highlight um, that has kind of helped you get to where you are? Any, any kind of mentors or anybody that's been influential on you that has helped kind of pave that way? Sure. I, um, I've done a lot in the, the music field as well throughout high school, throughout like rock and roll, and I take personal mm -hmm. voice lessons. Um, and people like Jeff Baer, who used to run the VPA program, um, and my voice teachers, Alice Wigfield, John Wickstead, um, and the people who used to, or the people who still do, but the people who are in um, the musical theater workshop at SU that I worked with them as well, um, they all kind of formed me to be this person, and not just like a performer, but like a functioning member of society and um, a, a vehicle for the arts um, to go into the future. That's great. Um... We talked about it a little bit, but I want to circle back to it. As, as we go through, you know, budget cycles and we talk about the, the public school system and what gets funded, what doesn't get funded, and we talked about a little bit about the importance of the arts. Um, and we are fortunate enough mm -hmm. to have a VPA program here locally. Um, why is it important to be able to have programming in local high schools or in, you know, community players or that stuff and have those avenues for kids to youth to be able to explore their inner selves or just um, just different theater in sure. general? Uh, programs within the curriculum like choir and band are a great way for people to start in performance. Um, like we have some people who definitely wouldn't do rock and roll if it weren't for their friends in choir who also do rock and roll. Um, but because they've done that, their confidence just spikes and they can focus uh, better in school. There's a huge amount of surveys that prove that um, people who pursue the arts do better in school. Um, so by funding the arts within school, you're actually also funding um, and supporting students in their regular core class endeavors. That's great. So I hope people are listening to that because I think it's a, it's a good uh, plug important. there. <laughs> um, is there anything else that you wanted to go over with us today that um, that you you know you wanted to share with people about kind of your journey and where you're going? I think it's just really important to note uh, musical theater people, especially because musical theater is the most difficult major to enter as an undergrad. Um, I did 13 college applications and I applied to nine programs, or I auditioned for nine programs, uh, and I was accepted into seven. Um, 
it's super competitive and no matter what your goal is um, don't give up just because it's hard because I had a lot of times where I thought I wasn't gonna make it and that uh, it was just too hard out there but like now I'm pursuing what I love doing and I'm gonna get to be in a great place and I'm setting myself up for a huge future um, and I just hope that people can take away from that that you really can do anything that you put your mind to as long as you work hard enough for it. Um, and it's, it's never too late to start, right? Absolutely not. No. Um, there are great performers who didn't start way until late in life. So, Allison, um, once you go on and become super famous and you've got your first Tony Award and you've done some Broadway stuff, you coming back for a reunion show to tell us about that experience? Of course. Like, Girl Scout promise. <laughs> you better. That would be great. We're, we look forward to seeing you here in a few years. All right. <laughs> Allison, I really appreciate you coming on the show today. It's been great talking to you and catching up about just what you've been doing from scouting to theater. And, you know, we wish you the best of luck moving forward um, with the university and then on to bigger and better things. Um, so thanks again for coming in. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching Hometown Heroes on Pack 14 If you'd like to nominate someone to be featured on our show, please contact George Whitehead at giwhitehead at salisbury.edu or call 410-749-1480. You too can be a hometown hero on Pat 14. Watch it.